Hello, this is Jack Jackson. We're going to continue our work with the chain rule in this video and probably at least another one. Um, in this video, we're going to focus on some contextual applications. So remember the basic idea is that we're going to end up doing a derivative of a composition of functions ends up giving us a product of derivatives. Um, so here's our example. A company sales of action figures is... Uh, have been increasing at a rate of 2,000 figures per year. And the unit price of the figures has been increasing at a rate of 50 cents or $0.5 per figure. What is the rate of change in revenue from the sales of action figures? So the rate of change in revenue is R prime of T, which is P prime of F times F prime of T. Here I'm using uh, Let's see, what am I using? I'm using F to be the uh, figures per year, and then P to be the, uh, the revenue per, or the, the rate of, of the figures, okay? So the, uh, the P prime of I of is, is the price, the change in price per figure. So that's the 50 cents per figure. And the change in the uh, number of figures per year is 2,000 figures per year. Well, if you work that out, the figures sort of cancels out. Those units cancel out. You get dollars per year, which is $1,000 per year. So again, it's a product of rates that's going on here. In the next example, let's see if you can work this one out. An oil spill is expanding in a circular pattern with the radius expanding by 200 meters per day at least at time t equals two days. And at t equal two, we know that the radius is 1,000 meters. How fast is the area changing? So we have some sort of relationship between the rates here. This is, uh, the chain rule is very closely related to a class of application problems called related rate problems. Okay, see if you can work that out. Press pause if you need to. Well, here's our answer. Let R be the radius of the circle in meters, and A equals the area of the circle in meters. T is the time of days. Recall that for a circle, the area as a function of R is pi R squared. We want to find A prime of T in terms of time, not how fast it's changing in terms of the radius. Okay? We already know that dr over dt at time t equals 2, which is R prime of 2, is 200 meters per day. Using the power rule and the constant multiple rule, we see that dA over dr, the derivative of A with respect to R, is A prime of R. That's 2 pi R. So what is A prime at 2? That's dA over dt at t equals 2. Thinking of A as a function of, two, of t now. right? Then A, it's A prime of R times R prime of 2. A prime of R is 2 pi R, that's 2 pi times 1,000. That's in square meters per, of uh, area per meter of radius. Times 200 meters per day, which is how fast the, um, the radius is changing, that's R prime of 2. Multiplying those, the meters of radius in both cases, in the numerator of the second one, the denominator of the first one, cancel. That leaves us square meters of area per a day of time and if you multiply that together that's 400,000 times pi square meters per day. Again it's a product of derivatives. Okay let's work our way through this this following set. Suppose we're given the graph which measures the distance a car travels as a function of time. So this is distance on the vertical axis, which would be in miles. Horizontal axis is time in hours. And let's suppose this is the graph. Okay. Further, suppose that the following graph gives the amount of gasoline used as a function of distance traveled. Here's how many miles we travel. Here's the total amount of gas that we've used. Uh, let's think about both of these things. 
uh, we travel as time goes on we're traveling further and further uh, distance that sort of makes sense so the distance is going to accumulate here total distance traveled and of course as the time goes on the amount of gasoline that you burn up is going to increase as well so here's the task can we use the information above to plot the graph of the gasoline used as a function of time say G, big G of uh, little t and know that the capital G is little g of d of t. It's a composition. Okay, so let's look at this sort of one. Let's take a particular point and, and look at this. Let's see. Uh, let's look at t equals 5. So if we take t equals uh, 5, that's all the way to the end here. We go up here to that line. That's 250 miles traveled in this particular trip which was happened over uh, five hours. So averaging about 50 miles per hour, which is the slope from here to here. Okay, so anyway, we have, uh, we have 250 miles when we have an input of t equals five. t equals five corresponds to a distance of 250. Well, 250 miles is all the way to the end of this graph and that corresponds to, well, let's see, this is 15, that's 18, just under 18 uh, gallons used. 17.8 or 9 or something like that. Okay, 17.8, let's say. And so... Um, Let's see, this is 17.8 gallons. So that point is on the second graph. 5, 250 is on the first graph. 250 cos 17.8 is on the second one. The 250s match there. So when you compose, we get 5, 17.8 on this, the next graph, which would be here. Notice it has the same T scale as the first graph. It has the same vertical scale as the second graph and the vertical scale on the first graph is the horizontal scale on the second graph so this is a, this function of this function gives you this function here and if we did this for lots of other points we could do this not just at one at the end but for every point along here if we did this slowly enough, we would get this graph right here. Now, so far, this is just pre-calculus uh, on these, this particular application, just finding the composition. Now, let's, let's do some calculus. So, let's see if we can do these. Estimate, first of all, let's see what's happening at t equals 2. So, let's just look at that first with pre-calculus. If t equals 2, looks looks like across here we get d is, uh, these go up by 10s, that's 40. So then we take 40, put it in here, and we get amount of gasoline is, well, it's between 3 and 4. Let's say 3.6 maybe. Okay. Now what about derivatives now? D prime at 2 would be finding the slope right here on this graph. Now, one way we could find that would be to go one grid line to the left and right here. Find the two y values, do a delta y, subtract, do the two x values, find a delta x, divide, and get a slope. And we find the corresponding slope over here. The, the corresponding point here, remember, was, was uh, y is 40 here. That's x equals 40 here. So we could find the slope on this one here would be the derivative right there, the slope of the tangent line. Again, we could approximate that with the symmetric difference quotient by going one grid line to the left and right and finding the slope between those two points is a pretty good approximation of the slope here or try to 
drawing the tangent line and find the slope from that. From that, what would we get the slope here? Now the corresponding point here again is back to the input of 2. We want to find the slope here. Again, we could find that by doing the difference quotient, symmetric difference quotient here. So um, I'm going to put it on each of these graphs. If you want to try to figure those out yourself uh, by looking at the graph, I'll give you a chance to maybe do that. So uh, figure out the slope here at 2, and then when you're ready to go on, um, press pause, and when you're ready to go on, we'll move to the next one. Press pause now. Okay, now hopefully you have a slope here. Now we want to find the corresponding slope here at 40. It should be right here. Find the slope there. I'll leave it on this screen for a second. You can pause it if you need to. Find this slope and come back. Press pause now. Moving on, let's find the slope on this one. This should be the slope right here at 2. Find the slope across there. When you're done, come back. I'll leave it where you can see it. Press pause now. Okay, here's what I came up with. I said D prime at 2 was approximately 40 miles per hour. Then we want to find, um, and D of 2 was about 40, mi 40 miles. So from the second graph, we go to, uh, to look at this, we get D uh, sub 2 is uh, D of 2, which is 40. We'd find a, um, D of 2 is, is there, okay, it's 40. We want to find the derivative at 40. So you should have gotten G prime of 40. I get around 0 0.08 gallons per mile. Now, it's a little hard to estimate from a graph, so you may be off slightly from these, but hopefully you got values that were somewhat close to this when you tried it for me. Now, when we go down here, the derivative on the third one was G prime, big G prime of 2. And you can see the what I use for a symmetric difference quotient there. And I got approximately 3.2 gallons per hour. And, of course, the relationship is is that if you multiply the 40 times the 0 0.08, you should get the 3.2. Or at least, since we're approximating, it might be off a little bit, but mine work out fine there. Now, here are the actual formulas. Uh, so we can actually do this with the formulas now and see how close we got. The formulas used for the functions are actually d of t is 10t squared and g of d is 1 7th times d plus 1 to the 7 8th minus 1 7th. That turns out to be the formulas that gave you the graph. So this d of t is t is, uh, what was it, um, 10 times t squared. That should be this one here. Like 4 square is 16 times 10 should give us 160. Yep. And then this one, that's actually given by this uh, more complicated formula here. It's a, it's a one, it's d plus one. Then you do the 7 8 power times 1 7th and subtract a seventh. Anyway, this is a more complicated thing, but that gives you this this green graph here. And the composition is this red one here. So the composition then would be to take um, is G of D. So you take this and you replace the D by the what the D is here, 10 T squared, which goes in there. Now, if we want to apply the chain rule as a formula, here's how we do it. We have to do a substitution. We let U or D equals 10 T squared and do that, and we can work it out. Actually. Um, that's going to involve doing the chain rule just to find this this function here too. So I'm going to do this a slightly different way. I'm going to let u be 10 t squared plus 1. And this becomes u to the 7 eighths. Now I can use the sum rule that says we do the derivative of each part. The derivative of 1 seventh is 0, so that goes away. Plus the derivative of this part. Well now just use the power rule. 7 eighths times 1 seventh is 1 eighth. 7 eighths minus 1 is 7 eighths minus 8 eighths, which is negative 1 eighth. And so we just use the power rule. But notice that we've done a substitution, so the u and the t do not match. 
So what we have to do is multiply that by the derivative of the u. u is 10t squared plus 1. Now this is the derivative with respect to t. That's polynomial. We know that one pretty easily is just 20t. Substitute back in what u is here. And there's the answer right there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this to the front together. Pull the t in the front. 20 times 1 8 is 28, which reduces to 5 halves. If I divide the numerator and denominator by 4. And so g, big G prime of t is 5 halves t times 10 t squared plus 1 to the negative 1 8th power. G prime of 2 then is just plug in 2 for the t's. And you can see it worked out here. It's 5 times 41 to the negative 1 8th, or approximately 3.14. And did I get, uh, yeah, we said 3.2. So that was pretty close. OK. And so on our next video, we're going to come back and just talk about uh, just, just good old fashioned, just compute some formulas of derivatives, but we're going to be using the chain rule to help us do that.